Mm, that's drunk. All right, folks, it's time for a good old fashioned, regular old. Uh... X-Men. <laughs> Sorry, I just had to hear that. But uh, yeah, I I initially wanted to do a regular structured review for this game. Uh, and I realized that would be kind of silly because everybody already knows this game. Everybody knows this game is awesome. It's a lot of fun. It's one of the best beat-em-ups ever made. One of the best arcade games ever made. So, let's take a look at x men as uh, Professor X said there. Here we got our our demo. But yeah, I'm playing this uh, on MAME. And we're going to take a look and uh, do a deep dive into this game. I'm going to play through the whole thing. We'll see how many... Uh, quarters I'll need <laughs> to get through this one. See how much money it will cost me. Um, my favorite character to play in this game is uh, Colossus. That's not entirely true. That wasn't really Magneto's. <laughs> Everyone's standing there like, uh, what, us? Really? Okay, so I love Colossus because um, of his special move. It was back in the day when you'd be walking around a mall or something like that, or like a, in my case, it would be the state, Minnesota State Fair, and you would hear the, the I'll, there's a certain time when I want to use it, use the special move coming up here in a bit, but um, you would hear that sound. And uh, it was it was like oh they've got X Men here like you you didn't even need to hear anything else it's like oh they've got X Men that's all the arcade was worth visiting if they had X Men but yeah the, as a beat 'em up this game is so fast paced this game is so good looking um, the backgrounds are awesome you, I mean for everything from God this guy sucks everything from uh, the, like the cracks in the streets here we go. <laughs> when you when you heard that sound, it was like you know music to my ears. So yeah, I, I when I heard that, I, I was like, okay, I, I'm where I'm supposed to be in life right now. I am near an X Men arcade game. So, but yeah, this game came in uh, two different forms. One was a four player, and one was a six player. And this is one of the very first multiplayer games that I can remember where it was like such an event to play and it was it felt like such like a big deal to play because the state the Minnesota State Fair uh, the Penny Arcade over there uh, which wasn't sadly was not actually a Penny Arcade but they had um, the six player version of this and there would be kids you know, two rows deep, three rows deep. Either they were just waiting for their turn to um, to play, or they were just content to just stand there and watch uh, everybody else play. And it was it felt so cool once you got your chance. Well, there's one quarter down, or one uh, one life down, I should say. You get two lives per quarter. Uh, Yeah, Pyro. Yeah, what? Pyro sucks. That's one thing about this game that was not uh, that didn't. It was kind of a, a bummer that the villains in the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants were so kind of lame. <laughs> like the Blob, it's just a big fat guy. Pyro's kind of not great. Um. It's like I when when it came to to video games and especially with how good this game looks and it captures the likenesses of everybody so well. And um I wanted to see like Mr. Sinister and Apocalypse and And by the way, what is with these like humanoid-sized sentinels? What are they foot soldiers? I mean they're donning the foot soldier colors. But yeah, it's. I always thought that was weird. It's like, okay, these are miniature sentinels. You do fight a slightly bigger sentinel later. But 
but yeah, no, they, they, they got the story. They, I mean, it's an arcade game. What kind of story are, could you hope for? You know what I mean? Like, it's... It's uh, it's like, oh, it's Magneto's taking over the world. It's like, no, not necessarily. He wants to create a world, a better world for mutants. He wants to... He doesn't want to destroy the planet or whatever the hell. When I first um, got into X-Men, uh, I remember it was because of my childhood friends uh, had gotten into... X uh, Factor and all that sort of stuff and this would have been in the early 90s and uh, he just I don't know he just ended up with an X uh, an issue to X Factor and he liked it and that grew into like buying all sorts of other comics and stuff and I remember my first one for me was uh, Uncanny X-Men 304 and that was toward the, the start of um, what's called the Fatal Attraction series where shit went down <laughs> in that part of the story and so I was hooked immediately. The Fatal Attraction series some people might know better as uh, the, the comics with the holograms on the front and uh, Uncanny 304 had one of Magneto and it's where he comes back from the quote unquote dead because he had supposedly been, uh, spoiler alert, but uh, they thought he uh, got blowed up real good <laughs> Yeah, back in uh, when they launched the regular X-Men comic uh, and they separated out to X-Men Blue Team and Gold Team. Blue Team went up to... Uh, uh, was it Asteroid M at that point? I think it was. Yeah, it was Asteroid M uh, to fight Magneto because he thought he was like the... Sa I, have, I forget exactly what his motivation was at that point. I think he had the acolytes as his um his followers at that point so it was like Fabian Cortez and all these dudes that thought he was god or the god of all mutants or something like that and then that like doubles down the fact that he survived asteroid m crashes to earth and uh, I might be getting this totally wrong by the way <laughs> um I think because on fatal attractions that's when exodus shows up and um, he's like the he's the guy that's like oh the, the acolytes failed him and they did, but um, yeah that's when he shows up and they start kind of like a new army. Um, but yeah, it was cool. Um, it was really it really hooked me. Some major shit goes down in X Men number twenty five involving Wolverine involving Magneto, and it was after that I was like oh my god this is so intense and just crazy over the top and the artwork was amazing and all that sort of stuff so naturally I mean this game came out in 92 and I didn't really get into X-Men until like maybe the next year until like 93 94 I think that's when Fatal Attractions happened but um and then the cartoon started um yeah so this still you know despite coming out in 92 this game stayed popular for years and years I mean I would s still go to um, the, s the state fair every year and every year they'd have that six player X-Men arcade cab and there'd be a shitload of people there watching and it was always super fun uh oh there we go that, that felt good right there plus I think Colossus arguably What does that mean? Does it mean you can't move yourself? Look at his knees. His knees look like eyes. But yeah, the, the blob is so lame, they had to give him like a mace. Yeah, let's just use up all these to knock him down. I do plan on switching characters eventually. Um, I also like using Wolverine in this game. That's a pretty... He's got a pretty good special attack, too. I think Cyclops probably has the most powerful, or at least one of the most powerful special attacks. But, yeah. This should be probably, I would guess, about a 40-minute playthrough or something like that. Pretty long for a beat-em-up, really. 
And then of course there's the boss gauntlet at the end that you have to get through. There's all sorts of other characters that get involved. Magneto looks so happy there. <laughs> All right, now we're on Island M. And I think... Isn't this where, like, Sauron and those guys were, supposed, were involved? This is usually how far I would get uh, as when I played this as a kid. And because these dinosaur... Oh, I hate that. These dinosaur dudes would, uh, would really screw me up. That's what one thing this game does really... That, that makes it hilarious is that when uh, enemies are prone on the ground, you can still wail on them. There's the, the, the move set here isn't what, like, like right here. <laughs> I hate your groin. You, I hate your groin. <laughs> he, uh, um, God, I'm losing lives left and right here. Um, those dinosaur dudes are so goofy looking. It's just like, I don't know why I'm calling them dinosaur dudes. I just, I guess they're alligator dudes. And they're just they're wearing gloves they're wearing they're not just wearing gloves they're wearing like Madonna material world Jessica rabbit gloves the hell hey come on man oh my god damage loop not anymore wow that was that's your classic cheap arcade damage loop where every time you even get up before you have the opportunity to press a button nope the game says no Oh yeah, this this level's got some creepy enemies, and some really good sprite animation here too. Some good artwork. Ah, oh, those guys are so cheap. Jeez, they jump from practically like all the way across the screen to get you. But yeah, no, there's there's not a lot of move set here. It's just you know grab a guy, punch him in the head, kick him while he's down. Really, the, the main thing this game has going for it is the way it looks, the way it sounds, uh, how fast-paced it is. Um, the, just the look of the game and the, the sound, the music, all that sort of stuff is what holds up extremely well, uh, in my opinion, anyway. Um, if you're just playing one player like I am, <laughs> it might not be that fun, but this is easily one of the most fun multiplayer games ever, just because... The game moves along that much faster when you've got another um, player involved. Like you're able, to, the same amount of enemies come at you. I'm pretty sure, and uh, that's it's uh, so so the you're just able to just eat through these guys so quickly. That's one uh, technique, by the way. If you ever want to increase the difficulty of a beat 'em up. Um, one thing you can do is start out playing multiplayer, um, or at least two player, and then just have the second player die, and then just keep keep them dead, and the computer will continue to act like there's two players, and it'll send more enemies in some games. I know it does that in, um, I want to say it's Turtles 2, the arcade game, and I think, uh, Turtles in Time does it, but only the Super Famicom version, which is kind of goofy. But yeah, that's one thing you can do if you want to increase... Uh, oh, here we go. Here's the famous line. Oh, thank you. That's very nice of you. I, I feel welcomed. It's nice to be welcomed to die. Maybe he means th the. Maybe, maybe it's German. And he, and, you know, he interrupted himself. By the way, if, if, if you can't hear the dialogue all that well or the, or the certain sounds or the music, um, I'm not sure how to fix that in MAME, to be honest with you. The sound just kind of is what it is at this, you know, at this point. Just trying to do my best over here. See, this is another kind of a lame villain, in my opinion. I mean, he makes for good uh, video game boss fodder. Wendigo, but um, he's not all that interesting as a character or anything like that. Uh-oh. I am out of quarters. I'm going to flip to uh, Wolverine. Says so he's... Him and Magneto are probably my favorite characters overall. I know that's, that's kind of a cliched answer. 
everybody loves Wolverine and everybody loves Magneto. Those the two most interesting characters with the most interesting backstories. Though I'd say Gambit's backstory is pretty dang cool too. With the Thieves Guild down in Go and rescue Kitty from the cave. Okay. <laughs> Wolverine's like, alright. I guess I go in here. And now, yeah, another thing this game kind of has going against it is that uh, you'll notice by now the enemies, the enemy variety and the enemy patterns aren't all that interesting. We just have color swaps for different stuff like, oh, now it's these uh, gator guys, but now they're kind of an off-white with a green tint to them instead of orange. And then we've got uh, Iron Man cosplaying <laughs> Sentinels. And we got this guy again. This is this is a Samus cosplay person. Just walking around with a big ass gun. Oh, the music in this stage is really cool. That was the other thing about playing this in the arcade. Uh, it was always really tempting to watch this game anytime you went past it because it's a pretty long game and there's a lot of different levels and settings and there's all sorts of different characters obviously there's six different characters um so it, you if every time i walked by it looked it felt like i was doing something new or seeing something new rather um like whoa i've never seen this part of the game before or something like that i've never seen that character's special move or, i swear i would just sit at the x-men arcade cabinet for like 45 minutes or some and just ignore everything else. So that's how much I love this game. <laughs> Wolverine's attack, you'd think he'd shred these guys no problem with his claws, but I guess not. That's fine, that's fine. And you'd think Wolverine's health would come back too. Oh, more of these guys. Yeah, it would have been nice to see a little more enemy variety for sure. Let's see, what else do I remember about X-Men? There's also uh, the cartoon and the cartoon theme song, which is uh, right up there with Ninja Turtles as one of the greatest theme songs for any cartoon ever. I, I put DuckTales up there too. Ninja Turtles. Uh, yeah, and the X-Men cartoon. Which is, uh, if it hasn't happened yet, somebody needs to, like, sample that song. Or at least turn it into, like, a freaking hip-hop song or something like that. Because it would be perfect. God, the freaking computer sends out, like, 20 guys at once. Oh, this freaking thing is so hard to hit. It's not hard to hit, it's just annoying. Uh, get over here. What is this? You got an army of Spyros? What the hell is going on? But yeah, the X-Men cartoon was another huge deal when I was a kid. Um, that was appointment viewing. Uh, never missed a week. Although I did get... I was one of those annoying kids, especially in grade school, like in 5th and 6th grade. I would get really annoyed if the cartoon didn't uh, quote unquote properly follow the comics like the the stuff they did with uh, the stuff they did with uh, I want to say it was um, uh, was it uh, Jean Grey and, and Dark Dark Phoenix and all that sort of stuff I know they messed up Cable's story big time um with all the time travel, they just did whatever they wanted with that. <laughs> they were just like, let's go crazy with this. Now here is a Super Sentinel, or is this actually Nimrod? Like, I don't, I don't even know. Yes, its name was Nimrod. Um, I'm not even sure what the heck, uh, I forget what this dude's proper name is. Another annoying thing is that um, this game employs, or yeah, all sorts of different uh, arcade tactics that are extremely cheap like anytime you use a special move it takes away life and not just one bar of life like you know how in final fight you 
if you do your uh, double kick or your uh, jump kick or whatever, your spin kick, uh, it takes away just like a tiny fraction. Whoops, sorry kitty. Didn't mean to blow you up there. Hopefully you didn't get singed by that explosion. My bad. Boy, she looks like she dresses at Marshalls. Okay. <laughs> Pans over them, they have no reaction. Uh. Ooh, now we've got uh, silver and green. Uh, Michigan State Spartan Sentinels, I guess. Uh, although I guess they're more uh, white and green. And more of these guys. Again, awesome looking background there with the storm. And the oh shit, I did not... I forgot that was a thing. Oh, these stupid things. Here's another damage loop. To eat your quarters. Oh god. Come on. That was ridiculous. I forgot about that. Hit and the thing. Totally cheap. Oh well, at least I can uh, switch characters soon once I die. Yeah, the music on this level is really good too. Ugh, I hate these things. They're so creepy. They do some sort of like whimper. And they only take three hits. Wow, now this game is getting all G.I. Joe. This is some Cobra bullshit here. Oh, and she welcomes me to die, too. I forgot about that. Thank you. Or welcome me to, to German V. Thank you. Poor White Queen. She can't even get a proper boss fight. All right, let's flip to Storm. I never see enough people play Storm in this game, so... Yeah, and her power is... Also gigantic and rarely misses its target. Yeah, White Queen doesn't even get a proper boss fight. It's sad. So where do I go from here? Do I go... Oh, I go down here. Okay. Oh, more arcade cheapness. More enemies flying from off screen. Absurd. And he got, you gotta love Storm's outfit. He, oh, come on. So cheap. At least I was almost dead anyway, so whatever. Storm's outfit is very 70s, 80s style. And then they gave her a kind of a, I think it was when Jim Lee became, took over. Or was it Mark Silvestri that did? Um... Uncanny? I can't remember. When she was the leader of the gold team, and they the way they kicked that story off was with Bishop showing up from the future, saying there's a traitor and all that sort of stuff. And Yeah. And St Storm, that's when sh they gave her the silver costume, the silver cat suit. Ah, jeez, that was just bad luck. Yeah, I still have those comics, but they're back home with my uh, at my parents' house in in Minnesota. So I, as much as I would like to read them again, uh, I do not. I would have to lug them down here to Albuquerque, and I, <laughs> I don't imagine doing that anytime soon. Whoops! I did not mean to do that. So what do we got coming up here? Oh, we got more of these guys. Does he zap you? Nope. He just has some dudes coming out of his mouth. For a second, I thought it might be like a... So should we continue on? Nah, let's do good old Nightcrawler. He's another really popular choice in this game because his power is like a clear screen attack. I'm telling you, if you play this game with Colossus and Nightcrawler as your two players, you will freaking beat this game in no time flat you'll still have to deal with all this stupid arcade nonsense like enemies from off screen appearing in less than a second and running you over in unstoppable vehicles you still have cheap boss fights 
You still have all sorts of, uh, yeah, arcade cheapness. Oh, that's the other thing. Yeah, you can actually hit enemies twice with your um, special attack with uh, Nightcrawler, which is... I mean, why the heck does Juggernaut have this giant cannon? He doesn't need it. He's, he's the freaking Juggernaut, for God's sake. He's got some nice boobs, though. Look at those. All right. <laughs> over there. But wait, it's not Professor X at all. It's actually Mystique. And you fall and fall and you land on your feet just fine. Actually, Nightcrawler would land on his feet just fine. <laughs> if that were anybody else, they'd, they'd get fucked up pretty bad. I think a storm would fly. Uh, Coloss er, Colossus... Uh, he'd be able to take the damage, I suppose. Cyclops would be dead. Wolverine would be fine. Dazzler would be dead. Yeah, this the music change here really gives the impression that you're getting toward the end of the game, when in fact I think there's a f there's at least one more level after this and then a boss gauntlet. Yeah, don't want to fall here. Oh, wow, that actually took those guys out. Sweet. Feels like Nightcrawler's almost too overpowered. I think I'm gonna switch to, uh, let's do Cyclops. Yeah, if I were to pick my four best, yeah, see, Cyclops just makes shit go boom. It's awesome. Um, gotta love the heads rolling around after you. It's the little touches like that that really make this game something, like a real, like, visual treat. Yeah, Cyclops' power is absurd. It's awesome. Um, his kicks look weak as hell, though. Oh, here's the first part of our uh, boss revisit. But these guys are super weak. <laughs> and on with the show. Um, oh, now we got our uh, Penn State Sentinels. Just white and blue. Um... Oh, these guys are so annoying, and then Cyclops' regular attack is shitty as hell. Look at that kick. Come on. Freaking Jubilee has a stronger attack than that, dude. And she's a 15-year-old girl. Yeah, no, my, my top four for this game would probably be uh, Colossus, Nightcrawler, Cyclops, just for, just for his optic blast. And I would say either Storm or Wolverine. I'm just not a big Dazzler fan. Her uh, special move is pretty good, but yeah, I don't know. I just was never big in it. Oh yeah, that's right, these things come alive. And are these fellows even from the comic or the cartoon or anything? Are they from something? I don't even know. It's just like, oh, what do we do? We come up with a boss. I mean, these guys might as well be from something like Metamorphic Force or Violent Storm or something like that. Some other arcade, Konami arcade beat him up. I'm doing, I'm, I am doing pretty well with Cyclops though. Oh, and then guess what? The middle one comes alive. How about that? Yikes. He can send your own attack back at you. Damn. Let's see if he does that again. Nope. All right. Should I stick with Cyclops? Ah, eh, since I've been bad mouth and Dazzler, let's uh, give her a, her time to shine here. I. Uh, this is not what I meant by shine. Yeah, her jump is kind of weird. I guess she's good at avoiding stuff. It just seems like, for whatever reason, Cyclops' attack range is so much... is not what it should be. It's so... it seems smaller than the rest of the characters. Hey, Professor X, why didn't you warn me about Mas Mystique, you idiot? Go after the giant 
Nice. Ah, oh, the pixel art here is so good. It's such a good representation of the comic. And of course we can breathe on this asteroid, no problem. Why wouldn't we be able to? Yeah, we fight outside here and then we go inside, I think, and then that's when the boss gauntlet resumes. And they won't be nearly as easy as uh, poor Pyro was, who took like one hit. <laughs> Yes, and now we've upgraded the solid gold uh, Sentinels. What are they? Made by Sony? Is this a PS5 promotion or something? Each of these Sentinels costs 500 bucks. Or how? What, what are they charging for that ridiculous gold bullshit? I don't even know if anybody knows what I'm talking about. I saw something about a, a gold PS5 being made, and it costs like $1,800 or something like that. <laughs> something stupid. All right, yeah, now we're working our way into our building. Yeah, her jump attack is pretty interesting. It's It covers a lot of ground. Yeah, let's just give him one of those. Look out. Look out. Okay, you know what? Dazzler's winning me over here. I think I might pick her over Cyclops, but definitely not over Colossus or Nightcrawler. Oh, not these guys. These guys are a pain. <laughs> they, just, they just bash her on the head with a gu with their guns. Why don't you try shooting her? There's certain flaws in your attack strategy, sirs. Maybe the maybe the glasses prevent him from seeing properly. He's wasting ammo, firing it into the air. Well, I guess if you try and jump over him, it might hit you eventually. Well, that was kind of a waste, but whatever. God, these guys are annoying. And they're purposefully annoying to eat your quarters. God, more of these dudes? All right, Dazzler. Let's uh, go back to my favorite, Colossus. Yeah, there we go. That's always so satisfying. Oh, and then we've got a blob fight anyway, so. Ugh, that was a quick death. Blob's got a rack, too. I mean, jeez. Oh, and we fight Wendigo at the same time. Gah! Take that. <laughs> oh, yep, and then we got White Queen. She's not a, a real level boss, she's a, more of a mini boss, but she at least gets her time to shine once again in the boss gauntlet. Yeah, let's roll with Colossus again. We're doing one quarter at a time at this point. I don't know how much money I've spent, but... Uh... Ah, wow! I didn't know you could do that for boss fights. You, I got thrown into White Queen, and it knocked her over. Yeah, I'm getting sick of this guy. Oh, God. Yeah, screw you guys. Ugh. Yeah, look at that. He threw me into J uh, Juggernaut. That's awesome. I did not realize that was a thing. See, it'd be cool if he took damage from the other guy blowing up. Oh no, Professor X and his brown corduroy pants and tweed blazer. Oh, whoops. Sorry to interrupt you, Magneto. Or quote-unquote Magneto. I was going to see if you wanted to welcome me to die again. What a nice guy welcoming people to to die. Okay. So let's get this over with here. Let's just let's pull off the mask and see who this really is. I'll give you one guess. And let's also uh let's do Colos or uh, Cyclops. Just cuz I like that explosion that happens. I mean, what is what exactly is being blown up here? If it's just, oh, it's Mystique. Wake up, old man. Yeah. No shit, Sherlock. Whoa, whoa. 
Ah, uh, final boss time. <laughs> you gotta love that. How can you not love that? This this boss fight, the sounds there are just the cherry on top. Wow, that was quick. He actually laughs and says you are dead. Now in 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 the comics and in the cartoon, Wolverine is always going to be have a massive disadvantage against Magneto. Thankfully does that does not manifest itself at all in the, this arcade game. But yeah, Magneto uh, would absolutely twist and tear Wolverine to shreds because, you know, adamantium skeleton, magnetic... <laughs> That's so fun. That will never not be funny. Let's go with Storm. I rarely see people play as Storm at the end of the game. <laughs> you gotta love when bosses conveniently just stand there waiting to get hit. There and laugh. Yeah, let's just freaking s spam him with special attacks. What? There's no second form? Come on! I'm disappointed in the arcade lack of arcade cheapness in the uh, in, in the final boss here. Magneto is defeated. X-Men succeed to rescue Professor and return to Earth with the victory. Oh, I couldn't, uh... Note, the game is not over yet. Yes, it is. <laughs> All it does is start you back at the beginning again. Now, I'm not going to play through this one again, but... I will say, uh, the game does... Wants, it still wants your quarters even after you beat it. Which is pretty... I guess I shouldn't be surprised. So if anybody out there was counting, I'd love to know how much money I actually spent. Uh, if, you, if you count one quarter for two lives. So I spent... A dollar... A dollar twenty-five at the beginning with to get ten lives for uh, Colossus at the beginning, and then I gave Wolverine ten lives. I spent probably around 10 bucks, I'm guessing. And you know what? It's 10 bucks well worth spent. It's one of the best arcade beat em ups ever. Even if it is cheap and <laughs> it dupes you into thinking there's more to this game, and no, you just start over. Actually, I, I never bothered playing through it two times in a row, so if there's more to this game the second time around, uh, please let me know. Because I get a little burnt out on this game after a certain amount of time because the enemy patterns just get so repetitive. Uh, yeah. And it's a beat-em-up. You know, beat-em-up shouldn't be longer than exactly how long this one is, which is like 30-some 30 30 some minutes. But, uh, hey, listen. I want to thank you for checking this video out. Thank you for watching. And I hope you have a great rest of your day. Cheers!